Well, motherfucker, you can't have my cornbread. That's for damn sure. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree gonna begin up in here on your ass right now. Right. If you think about my cornbread, right. they get the taste out your mouth. That's for damn sure. Cool. Now, fuck him. Right. Fuck this. Because I'm from New York City, goddammit. Nobody take no cornbread from me. And that go for you and any other you motherfucking farmers wanna try some shit. You fuck around with me, it's gonna be consequences and repercussions. Styles, Trey Frazier here in the house, y'all. Yes, Welcome sir. to another episode of the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. We are live right here on Facebook Live, y'all, on the Facebook page. Make sure y'all check us out there. Also, you can follow us on the Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at uh, Barbershop SPOR2 and also on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Uh, Maestro, we... Uh, Having some uh, things happen. We're here now. It's all good. But We're here now. Good. Um, but I, I do want to say though, um, today was a great day today. Yes, sir. Like, like I, I am in a great mood, um, despite the last couple of minutes. But t- I mean, everything about today was so great. Uh, the weather was nice. Um, I'm in the car bumping Biggie all day today, and at work, you know, shout out to the. Shout out to the homie. Shout out to the Brooklyn King right there. Rest in peace. 24 years since uh, we lost one of the greats in hip hop. Um, So today is just, I mean, it's awesome, man. Um, You know, I don't know about you, but, you know, I'm I'm feeling really good about today, man. I'm good, man. Good, man. Uh, Ready to get into sports. Rest in peace, B.I. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been screaming Um, B.I. at my my child all day today. Oh, that's what's up. So I've got to got to teach the young ones, man, about the greats. Shane won't hear it, but here we are. Hey, a lot of lot of stuff they don't want to hear. I mean, a lot of stuff we didn't want to hear coming up, but mm. it is what it is. But uh, we we got to start with the big story, man. Yes, sir. Uh, Dak Prescott, uh, Dallas Cowboys quarterback, has finally um, got his money. Yes, sir. And um, you know. Four years, one hundred and sixty million dollars. Uh, Seventy-five million dollars of that he gets his first year. Yep. Also, with um, the guaranteed money, one hundred twenty-six million dollars. Yep. 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 Um, man, uh, it's it's a long time coming, man, and I, I guess to kind of throw a little bit of um, shade toward your way. I mean, I know you had them, you know. Yeah, I didn't think he'd be there. Team. You didn't think I, he'd be there. I didn't think they was going to get it done. I ain't, Yeah, I, I stand yeah. by that. I didn't think they was going to get it done. Yeah. Um, but yeah. they got it done. So uh, he is the second highest paid quarterback in the league right now. Like, like you know, reports said he wanted to be. Um, mm-hmm. They they got it done. Uh, congrats to Dak Prescott. Um, you know, fix a couple of, you know, fix a philosophy or two here in the defense and you write back to saying that this is a Super Bowl caliber caliber team on paper. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, uh, you know, they, they got the pieces on offense. The offense was never the problem. Um, you know, obviously they, they want to start retooling the offensive line a little, but um, right now on paper, um, they're, they're in the contention on paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would I would I would agree with that. Um they just gotta fix the defense up. They yeah. really, if they could just get that situated and all the receivers are coming back. Right. Um Ezekiel Elliott's coming back. They're yep. not losing like the major offensive weapons for this football team. So you would have to think that um offensively they're gonna be where they were last year, even despite playing comeback in most yeah. of those games. Mm-hmm. 
um, defensively is where now they got to, you know, shore some things up. And, um, you know, and, and I wanted to mention also, um, I always mentioned that Dak wanted four years and Jerry wanted to give him five. Mm-hmm. So I like the fact that he got what he wanted. He got what he wanted. He got the four years. And after that fourth year, that off season, that cap is supposed to increase um, pretty significantly in comparison to previous off seasons. So it's definitely smart on Dak's part to, you know, work that thing and get it done. So like year four comes around because you know, what's going to happen. They're, they're going to come to him and say, Hey, we want to, you know, extend you. We want to put some more years on this thing and just stretch the money out where it's like, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to stretch the money out. I want to, I want another raise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I like the fact that he set himself up, you know, successfully for when that time comes around. For sure. For sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, congrats, black man, getting your money. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all I got to say. I mean, really, that's all I got to say about it, man. Uh, he deserves. He's in the market for uh, guys like Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. You know, when those guys are up. So... Lamar Jackson, um, your yep. GM came out and said that this contract is by no sh- stretch going to affect uh, Lamar's contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know what he means by that? I think what he means is that they're going to try to do everything in their power to give him an extension because if they wait until the end of that contract and he's a free agent, And I mean, and and let's just say he gets the free agency and he decides, yo, I want to stay with the Ravens. He's going to cost more money during free agency than he's going to cost right now. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what Eric DaCosta means by that. This contract is not going to have an effect, meaning he's not going to allow Dak Prescott's contract to be a tone setter for what they want to give Lamar Jackson. Now, do I believe Lamar should get paid? Yeah, Lamar sh- definitely should get paid. Um, if we're talking forty million dollar range, and you're, you're probably talking about forty two million dollars at this point, because Dak is getting forty mm-hmm. per year, so mm-hmm. now you're, t- you're talking north of forty million dollars. Um, that's that's pretty tough. But if he gets to that point. I would have to say that he's earned it if he gets to that point. Now, if they extend him and say he gets $35, $34 million, then I I, I got no issues with it because obviously Lamar's not going to have an issue with it because obviously he would have accepted the extension. Um, So in your mind, you don't think he should be in the $39, 40000000 million market? Like, you I think do you he think should be okay? He should you, be if he hits free agency, if he if he if he decides to not accept the extension and he waits till free agency, yes, he definitely should get just north of forty million dollars. But, but if he signs, say tomorrow, you saying that he's more in the thirty five million range? I would I would say they're probably going to try to lock him up in that within that thirty five million dollar per year range. Got you. Yeah. Um, I, I think one way or the other, he should be getting paid no le- no less than thirty five. Um, no less than thirty five. So it should I be agree. yeah. I so agree. it should be going up from it should be going up from there. You're talking about an MVP, and you know I yep. get I get you know, and I don't even really want to cape for a Raven right now. But um, I mean, there's Lamar Jackson is a top. I mean, just in production, he's a top. What, what would you say? Top, top ten. Top I'd ten. Yeah, I'd say top ten. Where would yeah. you say? Where would you say? I would say he's. I would say he's number. I'd say he's around six right so, now. Okay, okay. And I'm That's just fair. basing it off of yeah, last just, year. Yeah, because last last year was sort of down from what his MVP year was. Yeah. So I, I, I would say he's he's around six. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I would. You know, with without just freestyle, I would have said about six or seven too. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's gonna. It's gonna. And it's gonna be the same thing for Josh Allen too. And I know the Bills haven't came out and discussed what they're going to do with him, nor have the Browns came out and said anything about Baker. Um, and I don't even I know that Baker that, is in that same market. I mean, he had. We're talking about one good year. Yeah, right. 
I don't the rookie, even know year, the rookie year wasn't terrible, though. Yeah, but uh, it wasn't. But he's not going to get paid like those guys. Those guys are getting paid like the best quarterbacks in the league. Baker Mayfield just hasn't been that. Right, and and I think that the jury is still out yeah, on, on Baker, Baker Mayfield, Mayfield at yeah. this point. So, right. Um, but Josh Allen, um, and, I, and I guess, again, Josh Allen, one great year, close to an MVP caliber year. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know, kind of moving forward. Yeah, um, but right now the the three best quarterbacks um, are or should be getting ready to be getting taken care of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Or with that. best young quarterbacks, let me say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, yo, we, we we got black men getting paid at the quarterback spot, man. It's a beautiful thing, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it's a beautiful thing. Um, I uh, saw earlier today that the Pittsburgh Steelers are not going to tag anybody. No, this they season. Um, they haven't tagged anybody yet. I, I, I don't. I didn't read that they're not going to tag anybody. Yeah, I would check Adam Schefter's uh, tweet. Um, okay, he came out and said that the Steelers are not tagging nobody, which means a lot of people are going to walk. But Dupree is most likely going to walk. Yeah, and I a lot know of that's something you don't want. Yeah. Um, I mean, Ben Roethlisberger took a $5 million pay cut from mm-hmm. 19 to 14. Um, yep, I don't know if that's, that. I don't know if that's enough to get, uh, Bud Dupree signed. Um, the salary cap is not expected to exceed 183 million. Um, so that, that just bodes even worse for Pittsburgh. Um, right. uh, <laughs> at this point, I'm just hoping we can hold on to somebody. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, what um, if it's Juju, man? <laughs> I mean, like I said, man, I, I, I really felt like Juju was – I mean, I think I've been saying it in the regular season that Juju wasn't going to be a stealer next year. Him, Not because I yeah. don't like him, but just because uh, when numbers started to come out about uh, what he would be worth in the market, which mm-hmm. is 16 a year, yeah, it's no way we no, – And there's a lot no, of demand for receiver right now, too. There's no way we swing at 16 million a year. Um, mm-hmm. It's just no way we swing into that. I, I, at this point – um, I'm looking in the draft. I, I just I've been on Twitter looking in the draft, trying to see who uh, Stillis Depot is plugging as a good receiver that we could possibly get in the draft. Cause um, I think Juju's gone. I think James Conner is gone, much to my to my liking, honestly. But I think he's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, Dupree, like you said, is probably gone. Alejandro Villanueva is gone. Uh, like it, 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 it's we we going to. A lot of people are going to be gone from Pittsburgh in my in my mind. Yeah, 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 for real. Um, I did see a few other teams come out and not lay the tag on some players, um, i.e. Hunter Henry. Um, the Chargers aren't tagging him, so he's going to be a free agent. Yeah. Um, Shaq Barrett with the Bucks, uh, Godwin as well. Those guys aren't being tagged. So no, Godwin was tagged. tagged. Godwin was tagged? Yeah. Okay. 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 So that one was Shaq Barrett. So Shaq Barrett. But the the Bucks, I think, are trying to work something out with Shaq Barrett. I, yeah, I would hope so. Yeah, I, I would hope so too. Yeah. Um, you know, given you know how that team is built right now. So, yeah. Yeah, I would hope so. But the Bears, I saw, put the tag on Allen Robinson. Yeah. So there so goes. That, that, there goes anything. You know, Ravens fans. Let's just put that to rest. We're not getting. Allen Robinson, unless it's like a sign and trade situation, and I don't believe Allen Robinson is going to be any part of the sign and trade. So, mm-hmm. so that, that that is what it is. There. Um, other notables that I caught was Leonard Williams of the Giants was tagged. Uh, Brandon Scherf for the football team was tagged. Mm. Uh, Kenny Galladay was not tagged, so I guess he was high on the expected. You know, expecting to be uh, tagged, so he's going to be yep. able to test the market. As yep. well as Aaron Jones of the Packers was not tagged. He's going to be able to test the market. Okay. Hey, there you go. I know that was one of the running backs you had on your wish list there. Yeah, but my but but it starts with um it starts with Najee Harris. Um be clear. Uh I don't know that we're gonna be able to afford anybody of that type of production that Aaron Jones had last year. I don't think we're gonna be able to afford anybody of that. Um, if we're going to, we're our running back market, like as far as free agents go under the night, it's funny cause I just been reading articles about it today. They fall under the lines of people like, uh, Dion Lewis, 
uh, Theo Riddick. Um, those caliber of backs are the type of backs that we're going to be able to afford for cheap one year rentals. Um, we're not, we just can't afford nothing, much of nothing. So who besides the quarterback has a big contract on that team? Uh, a big contract? Um, yeah. Ben, I, I don't know. I wouldn't or necessarily, not necessarily a big contract. Held maybe, up. maybe a contract that, you know, if you release some um, Ben Roethlis, uh Ben Roethlisberger, Cam Hayward. Um, mm. I mean, really, as far as big, you know, that's holding it up. About, mm. that, I mean, that's, that's about it. But we got a lot of guys that, I mean, like Joe Hayden is a little expensive. Um, mm-hmm. uh, De Castro is a little is, is is a little expensive if I'm not. You mistaken. got like a lot of guys that's probably making like in the range of eleven to yeah that type yeah that year. type of thing. Uh, I mean you know obviously you know obviously we're gonna get T J Watt done when it's time, but um, you know Minka Fitzpatrick is going to be a, a, a issue in maybe two years mm-hmm. and maybe probably mm-hmm. as soon as next year, um, at the end, as soon as the end of next year, um, you know, mm-hmm. um. Cam Sutton. I mean, Cam Sutton might be gone this year. To be honest, um, I hope we don't lose him. Cause he's a free agent, right? Um, I'm not. I don't think that he's a free agent yet. Uh, uh, Mike Hilton is uh, going to be a free agent, mm-hmm. um, and pff, he's probably gone. I don't want him to be, but he's probably gone. Yeah. Like I, I'm, I, I'd be lying to you if I said I was really ecstatic about. Um, the people that were leaving, particularly in the secondary. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that being said, Devin Bush is coming back. Robert Splane, uh, who had a you know a decent year, is coming back in the linebacking core. Um, Alex Highsmith, people seem to be high on him and how he performed with Bud Dupree out. Um, you know, so I still think defensively, because we're young, we'll be fine. Um just we gotta figure something out on offense. Yeah, yeah. Well, my team hasn't used the tag yet. Nope. Um, as it, as it speaks, so I'm I'm looking at guys like Dengakwe and Matthew Judon. Uh, those guys are gonna be gone, or or at least that's my expectation that they're gonna be gone. So we we just gonna have to. I hope you know, so. Tighten it up in the draft. You know. I mean, Matthew Judon. He he he's good. I mean, I, I don't I don't know if I you know give him you know all that money, mm-hmm. you know just to just to be good. You know you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like he's he's all right. And Yannick, what you think? I, what you think? Nah, you was big on the Gakway now. I was, I yeah. was, but he hasn't done much to really solidify the trade the second half of the year. Yeah. So, you know, what you gonna ask him to take a hometown discount? And I'm like, nah, the the, the nigga just got there. He's, mm-hmm. he's he's looking for his payday. Right. So, right. So yeah, if he if he go and, you know, get some money elsewhere, hey, go go get your money, man. We we just gonna have to replace you, bruh. Raven's been doing this for twenty some years. It's mm. nothing new. Mm. Um, you know, they, they, they got a hit in the draft, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they 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 got a hit. You and me you know? both. They, they you and me hit. both. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm I'm looking over at, you know, the Browns over there and the Browns, you know, as long as they don't screw things up in the front office, look like they got things, you know, set for a good, you know, three years, the next three years. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I'm and I'm hearing all this old oh, Beckham trade talk. Yeah, yeah, I heard Tampa. I heard Tampa as a rumor. I've heard Tampa. I've heard Tampa. And I, I, I've heard some people say the Ravens too, but I, I don't think the Browns are trading with us. So I heard uh, I heard rumors of Antonio Brown going to Baltimore. Oh, that's still out there? I just read it today. <laughs> that's still out just there. Just read okay. it today. I mean, I mean, be clear, as good as a receiver he is, and I'm sure he likes Tom Brady and Tom Brady likes him. Um, he, he's, he wasn't super used. No, you I know? mean, and, and we know why. We, I mean, we know why he wasn't well, super used. Well, why do you say why? Why do you say? Um, look at the weapons on that team. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I was making sure we were saying the same thing. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah, just Mike, other weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I mean, if you look at the tight ends, I mean, you could yeah. argue though some of those tight ends were more option or in line to be like the number four yeah. option than AB yeah. was. Yeah, so hundred percent. I, I I think that's Gronk for certain. Yeah, Gronk yeah. for certain. Yeah, Gronk for certain, and you could argue Cam Brate yeah. as well. Yeah. Um. So that doesn't surprise me though. Now, I mean, now that we're kind of talking about who's on that offense, yeah, that it doesn't surprise me that he would want to go somewhere else to be the number one option or even. Well, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't even know that he's he's saying that. I I uh-huh. just just a rumor I read. It's, I don't know that he's saying he want to be gone. But this is rumor right. I read. Right, right. Um, while we're talking about rumors, uh, mm. in the Russell Wilson saga, uh, it's been rumored that mm. he, Chicago, is now his number one pick. <laughs> I guess because Dak got his money and he's staying with the Cowboys. So, because you know, the Cowboys was one of those four teams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now that that's a scratch off the list, now, you know, Chicago's on the list there. You know, I, you know, and I, and I, and I saw this today too that, they sent they being the Seahawks sent the letter to the fan base, I mm-hmm. guess season ticket holders and mm-hmm. Russell, I guess, wasn't a part of I guess the letter or something like that. Like I don't know how that works. Like yeah. do they have like a bunch of players' faces on and then they left his face off? Like I'm yeah. I'm I'm trying to figure out how that works. Yeah, but I know. if it, however that however that is, if you leave him off of that, then you, you, you got a question further. You you got a question further. Yo, like, what's really what's really good? Like this, you know, because I'm I'm that. of the opinion he's staying there. Me too. And I, and I, and I think you say to feel the same way. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going anywhere. But, but the more these things keep popping up, the more it's like. How yo, you feel about him in Chicago? Um. I think I feel pretty good about that. I Seems like more of the same to me. Um, I guess the defense is better in Chicago. The defense is better in Chicago. Um, I think the offensive line may be slightly better in Chicago than in Seattle. So I think I, I think Russ could do well in Chicago. Um, I mean, and, and you tagged Allen Robinson, so you know you're keeping a the guy there who's their best. Yeah receiver and you're yeah. still keeping david montgomery and um and Tariq cohen's still there right i don't i don't know i know david montgomery was getting the bulk of carriers by the end of the season right, right. i don't know okay. i don't know where terry cohen is okay like i don't even know if he's like a free agent or not yeah i don't know where he is to be or honest he just kind of fell out of favor or something but well i, I know just... i know david montgomery's younger he's i mean he's he had uh he had a strong you know, he last, had a strong finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah for like certain. When it was when it was making that playoff run for certain. Those last he three had weeks. a strong finish. Yeah, and yeah. I and I wasn't seeing Tree Cohen's name mm-hmm. at all. Yeah, I think that I think that's a good situation. If Russell goes there, he makes them a better football team. Yeah, I think I agree. So, I read this today on uh, one of the Philly websites. Um, Jeffrey Lurie, the owner, came out and publicly said that the Eagles are not drafting a quarterback um, Mm -hmm. in the first round um, and also said that they are going to build this team around Around Jalen Hurts. Hurts. Now, I I feel a couple of ways about it because I don't feel like the Eagles should even have to say that. You know what I'm saying? Because if you draft a guy in the second round, obviously second round players, you know, particularly quarterbacks, you know, they you get think. their chances to be the future of the franchise mm-hmm. after in the second round. Yeah. But I understand why he said that. And the reason I understand why he said that was because there was a lot of chatter going on Philly radio between hosts, people that call in talking about, we don't know about Jalen Hurts. Um, they might draft a quarterback and, you know, you got insiders talking about, oh, you know, they, they really not sure. You know, maybe they'll, you know, they got the number six pick, that kind of a thing. So it's kind of up in the air. Jeffrey Lurie put that to bed. And I and I understand why he came out and said what he said. And I feel really good about Jalen Hurts. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, He I mean, he is the type of quarterback that seems 
outside that seems to be working right now. Um, thanks to Lamar Jackson. So, uh, you yep. know, yeah, for sh- for sure, he they should build a team around him. I mean, that I think that would that goes without saying. Um, I we'd be I think we'd be more in Philly Philly shit if they drafted a quarterback high or or, yep. or really at all. I I don't at, see at them, all. Yeah, I don't see at all. Need, really? Yeah, at all. Yeah. Now, I don't if, see you, now if you draft a guy in the sixth seventh round, nope. nobody nobody cares. Nobody cares. But no. I, I I still I think that's a waste of a draft pick. What are you drafting a quarterback for? Unless he was that good in the sixth. Unless he was that good. And mm-hmm. still, if he was that good, what do you? You don't need him. He's not. I mean, he's not going to play. So who's the back? Who's the backup there? Probably Nate Sudfeld as the at this point. Oh, oh, he's garbage self. I'm yeah. About him. So, yeah, but I'm still, but I'm still not wasting a draft pick on on a quarterback. Not a, yeah, not not that you say that, and, and now that I remember, it's Nate Sudfeld, and they speak highly of him, even though I think he's trash as a backup. Even, um, yeah, you you probably want to get as many you know non quarterback players as you possibly can. They got holes. Uh, they got holes. They're under the, like they're so over the cap. It's not even funny, too. Yeah, like they they got big contracts to old guys, and um, I, I know they was talking about Jason Peters, um, you know, getting old, getting up there, um, a few other guys. So they they got some old contracts that they're gonna have to figure out how they're gonna you know even be a player in free agency. I don't even mm-hmm. think that's even possible. I don't think that's possible either. But they're in the NFC East, so I mean. Play decent, play decent football. You might be in the playoffs. So, you might, yeah, you might win seven and nine, eight and eight. We need a division mm-hmm. <laughs> for real, right? Good, 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 good point there. So, did you watch any of the All Star game? On no, I didn't. I watched. I mean, I watched highlights, but I didn't watch the game. No, I ain't gonna. I didn't watch the game. Yeah, so I peeped in right about the third quarter. And after that, I was just like, nah, I'm, 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 I'm just not digging it. Now I heard that the dunk contest, um, was pretty good. Yeah. Except the except the judging was a little bit suspect, because a lot of people felt like Obi Toppin had the best dunk. And um, who was it? Anthony Simons that Anthony Simmons. Anthony, Anthony Simmons, Simmons from Portland. From Portland, yeah. They 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 you know elected him the winner of the dunk contest. Um, you know, I, I, I really don't care either way. Um, Neither do I. Dunk I don't, I don't it's think that. And and from the highlights, I don't. I think Obi Toppin did have maybe the maybe the best maybe. I mean, it was a difficult dunk. It didn't, I wouldn't say it looked the best, but it was a for certain. Over two diff- cats, right? He jumped over two cats. Nah, right? nah, nah. Oh, that wasn't even the one that I considered to be his best dunk. The one that I considered to be his best dunk is where he kind of like. Uh, like, like bounced the ball between his legs and then caught it up in the air, yeah, and, and, and dunked it. And it was yeah. it, it, it was a difficult dunk. Um, mm-hmm. right, right. But but I think Anthony had more dunks. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Anthony Simmons was the guy who put on the Tracy McGrady jersey and did like a, a 360. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that was him who did that. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I, I think I, I mean from what I saw, it looked like Anthony Simmons had more dunks, and um, I think he, I think I don't think they got that wrong. Um, Steph won the I de- St- Steph won a three point contest. That man must score thirty points in a uh, in a in his in one of his rounds, which was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't I don't think yeah. it's a question of who's the best shooter in the you know ever is. Um, right, right. Uh, I don't know who won a skills competition, nor do I really super care. Yeah, um, to the game, the only thing I did notice is that, um, you know, Giannis won the MVP. Uh, 16 for 16, right? Yeah, but and, and, and was the leading scorer, yet I still don't feel like mm-hmm. he should have won, just based on the highlights. Now, I, again, I didn't watch mm-hmm. the game. Right. Um, because... Steph Curry was dunking. He was mm-hmm. shooting from half court. Him and Lillard, um, just based on highlights, I, uh, 
Okay. I, I, can, I can understand if you're basing it off of highlights. If I, yeah, I'm just basing on highlights. I mean, I can, sure, I 16 for 16. Well, I mean, from the field. I mean, I mean but he yeah, shot... Some of that was, some of that was you know, towards the basket. No, nah, but, but he was shooting three-pointers, and he was bank was. shot in three-pointers. No, he was bank shot in three-pointers. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. That alone, you don't deserve to win MVP. I'm sorry. You, I don't... I, I don't know. I don't know where you from, but where I'm from, you don't bank three pointers. They like you don't bank three pointers and, and, and like pat yourself on the back behind it. Yeah, you get the points, but you kind of like say, you get the points. Obviously, man. but he, obviously, he, he, he but didn't miss a shot. You didn't miss a shot. Like banking a three pointer is that, like that's crazy. Banking that, okay. three pointers is like the most disgusting thing known to man on a basketball court. Banking okay. three pointers, and it's not like he just like. Like he's he's a terrible shooter. I he's a terrible shooter. Mm-hmm. He's a terrible shooter. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Uh, but um yeah. Three times. Yeah, he's a terrible shooter. He just is, <laughs> Four bro. Times. Like you you banking three that I mean, do you know how ugly that looks banking a three pointer? So Sure you get the points, but it's uh I I got a good comparison for that, right? So it's kind of like a quarterback completing 100% of his passes, but they're all checkdowns. Yeah, but see, checkdowns, they ain't ugly. Uh, <laughs> well, they're not They're not ugly. Um, They're not flashy either. Sure, but I, I, I can't... It, it's an aesthetic. It's just an, it's, it's just an aesthetic. And, and Banking one three certain, pointers are ugly. A bank, and one thing's for certain, a bank shot is not flashy. At least um, in my opinion. Sure, oh, sure, but it's okay when it's inside the three point line. It's like uh, nobody has a problem with that. If he shot sixteen for sixteen and didn't bank a three pointer, but he was banking baseline jumpers and you know those types of things, floaters, those types of things, yeah. you know nobody has a problem with it. Him banking at least two three pointers is a problem for me. That is disgusting. Well, listen, I, I can't deny. But shout out that. to Giannis. Yeah, shout out to him. I can't deny that, you know, do, you know, shooting bank shots from three, you know. I I, I, I guess for me, and I, I'll, I'll just differ in this way, um, I do think that he deserved the MVP. Um, anytime you go 100%, you know, from the field or for 16 shots, I mean, it, it, it's hard not to. Um, and, 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 and get this. He shot that one three ball, and I can't remember if it was the bank shot or if it was one that went flush right in. But the, you should have heard the announcers; they was like, "Giannis, no, don't do it, don't do it." Like they was they was rooting for him to keep his hundred percent from you know field goal range mm-hmm. intact. Mm-hmm. And he shot, and he shot that at like probably the chances of it going in was maybe ten percent. And that shot went in. Again, I don't remember if it was the bank shot or if it was the one that went flush in. Well, the two but, ones that I saw was not was uncontested. So I don't see where the percentage yeah. was so low. Um, and I'm not going to pretend like I'm about to go back and... I, I'm I'm not giving you an MVP because you shot 16 for 16 mm-hmm. when when Steph Curry and Damian yeah. Lillard is pulling up from, from, from half court. I'm... I think you. I, I think. I think part of this though too is you. You. You still. You still tough on Giannis, and that's okay. That's okay, especially you know him getting knocked out the playoffs last year by Jimmy mm. Butler. Nah, um, I, I you know, mean, I mean, I. I, I think you, you. You're hard on Giannis, and that's okay, because he definitely deserves the pressure. I think anybody. I think. I well more than that. I don't think. I don't think going perfect from the field is such a great accomplishment. I don't think that's, I mean, I get that it's hard to do. Nobody does it. It doesn't happen. Yeah, um, yeah it doesn't happen often. Yeah, it doesn't. I can't think of a time where it's happened, where a guy has shot, you right. know, you know, two from two from three, you know, I don't know if you got any free mm-hmm. throws or that, but I don't know nobody yeah. who's done it. But I, that's just not impressive. I mean, one quarters one through three, nobody was even playing defense. Mm-hmm. That's not impressive to me. Well, I'm glad that All Star Weekend is behind us. Mm-hmm. Second half of the schedule starts on Thursday, I think. Okay. 
and um, it's going to be exciting, man. Um, you know, I, I like where my team is at um, in the standings, but we got a tough schedule, man. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think we come out, we got the Bucks, we got Philly, we got OKC, even though OKC's not a you know good team right now, but they beat us already this year. And then we got the, I think we got the back to back with y'all, mm-hmm. uh, maybe in a week after this, you know, Thursday. Coming if up, I'm not so. mistaken, bro, um, and let me let me check my phone to be sure. Mm-hmm. I think ain't the Wizards and the Sixers playing. Uh, let me find out because I just saw something about Ben Simmons not playing against the Wizards because of contact tracing. Yeah, and and B too. And, yeah, you know that 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 whole thing, you know, before the All Star game, that kind of turned real crazy, where uh, both guys they used the same barber, and um, hmm. you know, they they you know they had to do the contract tracing, and you know they made the right call. Don't don't play the guys. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not about to look for it, but I I I know that they're not playing. So I, that might be Thursday, might be today. I don't know. But um, definitely not today. It's definitely not today. Okay. Definitely not today because everybody's on their break still. Okay. Today, today and tomorrow um, will be the days off, and then you got games starting up on Thursday. So. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So, um, but um, for you know both our teams and look, I I, I see the Wizards come. You know, you never know. It's the Eastern Conference. Um, any any anything's possible there, um, where you got the fourth team and like the twelfth team within like four five games of each other. Hey man, I I, I keep it I, I keep it on the chill chill. I keep it on the chill chill for right now. For right now, you need for right to get now. Hype, man. Nah, I ain't Brad gonna. Bill, I, I ain't gonna turn up. I ain't Russell, ain't gonna turn Russell, up triple on. double Westbrook, man. I ain't gonna turn up on you right now. I'm chilling right now. All right. Um, it's rumored mm-hmm. that the Rockets are getting ready to deal in a fire sale. I mean, they're getting ready they to, need to. Yeah. They need to. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, I'm interested to see what happens to Oladipo. Because um, I know some of my friends back home, they would like to see Oladipo on the Knicks as long as they don't give up a whole bunch of you know, of draft picks and players for him. And at right. this stage of the game, I don't even think Oladipo's even worth a first round pick, if you ask me. I think he's worth a second rounder. Mm-hmm. I think he's worth a player or two at this point. I don't think you give up Oladipo. Really? I don't think you give up multiple picks. Especially if one of those picks is a first rounder. I, I don't I don't I don't think he's worth that right now. Okay. Well, that's an interesting take. Um, I mean, top notch score. Nah, I mean, not not not. I ain't gonna say top notch. I was gonna say because he's averaging about nineteen right now. Right, I'm about to say, but it's but for certain a strong second second option. Oh, no doubt, definitely up and, an extra and, and long second option. No doubt, no doubt, and I, and I think what's happening with the Knicks right now is is that they're playing good. They're playing great defense. Um, you know, number one in the league right now. Um, offensively is really where we have our struggles with, right? Like I was watching, this might have been a month ago, I was watching the game against Chicago, and it was like a back and forth game, you know, real, real good game, you know what I'm saying? And I sat there thinking to myself, like, as as maybe not as good as these teams are playing, like, you know, record wise. Like, the difference really is is that the Bulls have Zach Levine and we don't, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. Zach Levine can close games. Um, Julius Randle's game is not the type where he can, you know, close games like that. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, Julius Randle is, you know, doing things more like, kind of like what the Joker's doing in Denver, but maybe not on the Joker's level. Mm-hmm. But, but, he, but Julius Randle is not really that you know that closer and and Derrick Rose um at this stage of the game is playing some good basketball but I don't think he can close the way that some of these young bucks in the league can close right now either 
Yeah. Um, so, but that's, but that means, that sounds like you're saying they need Victor Oladipo, though. Um, I don't think they need Victor Oladipo. Um, it's, especially if his contract is up the end of the year. Because mm-hmm. what's going to happen is you want, you trade for him, you want to keep him. You want to yeah. be able to lock him to a contract. Um, I don't think that's a guarantee. Why not? Um, be- because he might want to play somewhere else. Oh, um, oh, just oh, know, okay, I, just because of that. You know, it, you know, I, 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 as 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 good as the Knicks have done this season, um, there's a man named James Dolan that still owns this basketball team, mm-hmm. and you know, he's been quiet. He's he's basically been quiet all season up to this point, and the Knicks are winning games. We're you know we're five hundred. You know, nobody expected us to be at this point. I I would be okay if they didn't trade for nobody by the deadline. Right. Like, I think if you just let this thing play out and let these guys figure it out on their own and go through the gauntlet of the schedule, you know, like I, I just pulled this up right here, right? So, and I'm talking like the last two weeks of the season before the playoffs start, right? So we got six road games in a row, right? So at Houston, and Houston, like you said, is going to be doing a fire sale at this point. So they're probably not going to. And they're like they're they're there. like the second worst team in the West. So right, right. So but but get this: after this comes at Memphis. That's a tough team with John Morant and them boys. That's a tough team right there. At Denver, at Phoenix, at the Clippers, at the Lakers. Mm-hmm. That that's a tough stretch of road games to go through, and that's what the first week in May, right before, um, and we got three more games after that against the Spurs, Boston, and Charlotte. So that's a that's that's a tough schedule down the stretch, and that could be what kind of makes or breaks us in the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Um, how you feel about Blake Griffin going to the Nets? Uh, my man is trying to get his ring, and I yeah. and I am here for it. I, yeah, I, I, I I am here for it. Um, he is the fourth. Um, and I'm I'm not even sure if I'm being nice about this because I think Joe Harris is pretty good at shooting the basketball. Um, but Blake Griffin is anywhere from the fourth to fifth option on this basketball team at this point, and I think he's going to thrive being the fourth option. Mm-hmm. On this team. Cause mm-hmm. he can, cause I think he can still score thirty points, and I'm not saying he's averaging thirty. Yeah, points. I'm right. saying I think he's gonna have some nights where he comes off the bench and he can give you uh, a double double. You know, maybe thirty and ten or something like that, and you just kind of catch it out of nowhere. Man, these t- this team stays healthy. I-, I I don't see why they don't win the chip this year. I think the way things are right now even with Anthony Davis not playing right now, it is the next championship to lose yep. right now. Yeah. It, it, it is. I know we, we had some conversations about that. Maybe I've been saying, ago. yeah, I've been saying it for you. I've been saying it since the start of the season, but, but with the acquisitions, you know, obviously they added Harden, yep. um, mm-hmm. you know, they add in, uh, Blake Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you add that. Um, and, and, and look, they're getting to the finals without Blake Griffin. So, Facts. Um, but with Blake Griffin, and that's going to be like an X factor for the team. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure teams in the East are going to be ready for that. You know, not even not even Philly. And, and and Philly right now is you know doing their thing right now. Yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. But I think right now Brooklyn. Hey, look. Uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody who was listening to the show. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Barbershop S-P-O-R-1. Uh, make sure you like the Facebook page. Um, subscribe to the YouTube page. And for Trey Frazier, this is Maestro Styles, and we'll see y'all next week. Peace.